I am Dr. Gopakumar Narmalan. I am working as a diabetologist at the Al Hayat International Hospital in Gubra, which is situated in Oman. I will be taking you through a series of presentations which will make you understand about diabetes, which is becoming a fast growing epidemic around the world. What is diabetes? Well, diabetes is a condition which is caused by the absolute or relative deficiency of insulin, a hormone which is produced by the pancreas. Pancreas is an organ which is situated behind the stomach. Insulin is produced by beta cells, a type of cells in the pancreas. Diabetes can be broadly classified as type 1 and type 2 diabetes. However, there are other conditions which can have diabetes such as pregnancy as well as those who are on certain medications as well as when associated with other conditions. Type 1 diabetes means that there is an absolute deficiency of insulin due to the absence of secretion of insulin by the beta cells of the pancreas. The treatment of this will involve insulin as the only modality of treatment. However, type 2 diabetes patients will have either a deficiency in the secretion of insulin whereby insulin would not be enough to meet the demands or they would have enough insulin but there would be a block in the action of insulin. The treatment is generally to start treatment with oral medicines and when oral medicines fail, insulin would be the only treatment. In studies that have been conducted around the world over the past decades, it had been found out that in the year 2011, there were 366 million people diagnosed as having diabetes from the various registries around the world. And 280 million people were found to be having pre-diabetes, a condition which is just preceding diabetes. However, at the present rate of prevalence of diabetes, it is projected to almost double, that is, by the year 2030, around 550 million people are expected to have diabetes and the incidence of those with pre-diabetes would almost touch 400 million. Now, it's a strange fact that even with all the advancements in healthcare around the world, of the 366 million people who are affected with diabetes, only half of these seek professional help. Out of these half, only half get treated and of those half, only half achieve the target goals which have been laid down by the various professional bodies. Out of these half, only half would live free of the various complications of diabetes. So to put it in a nutshell, of the 366 million people diagnosed, only close to 10 million people achieve everything towards excellent care in diabetes, which is quite frightening indeed. And 80% of the diabetes can be prevented by leading a healthy lifestyle. There are different complications which are related to diabetes. Diabetes is called a silent killer. It can affect the brain, causing a stroke. It can affect the eyes, which can lead to blindness. Diabetes is the most common cause of preventable blindness around the world. It can affect the kidneys, leading on to a nephropathy and then later on to kidney failure. It can affect the nerves of the body, especially the distal parts of the lower limbs, which can lead to altered sensation, thereby you can even have people who have reduced vascularity and thereby leading on to amputations. Amputation diabetes in general is said to be probably the commonest cause of non-traumatic amputations around the world. Heart involvement in the form of either a heart attack or a dilated heart are well-known complications of diabetes. How exactly would you diagnose diabetes? Diabetes is commonly noticed by the people who have increased hunger, increased thirst and thereby increased urination, which do not ma match with the environmental needs. There are people, however, who notice that they have diabetes when they are diagnosed with either a heart attack or when they are noticed to have reduced vision. Some people have a delay in the wound healing which normally would take maybe five to six days and when it takes a longer time, people go to the doctor and they are diagnosed as having diabetes. However, it's equally important to know that 
most of the people do not have any symptoms to diagnose diabetes and they are just found to have high blood sugar levels. How exactly would you know by looking at the lab reports? 60 or 70 years ago, urine sugar used to be one of the major criteria used in diagnosis. However, in the present world, urine sugar does not have much of a role. It's the blood sugar level which is done in fasting, which is taken as the gold standard. The level that is usually made to make a diagnosis is a level above the 7 millimoles per liter or in some part of the world it is 126 milligram per deciliter. The post meal sugar done two hours after the major meal should be below 200 if you are not diabetic or a level of 11.1 .1 millimoles and less. However, in 2012 the American Diabetes Association, a major governing body in the diagnosis of diabetes, found out that the three-month average of sugar called the glycated hemoglobin level was implemented as a part of diagnostic acumen and a level of more than 6.5 percent would qualify for being called a diabetic. By the time you have diabetes, 50 percent of the pancreatic beta cells are already destroyed. So it takes a lot of doing from the healthcare professional side as well as the patient side to try and prolong the life of the remaining 50% of the beta cells that are not yet exhausted. Fasting blood sugar normal should normally be checked after at least 8 hours of fasting. The fingertips should be cleaned properly before doing a prick and one should also be sure that the glucometers are working in good condition. There are people however who would not check their sugars frequently, they would use the glucometers once a month or probably even once in two or three months. But one should remember that this being a digital device, the batteries could wear out thereby you would get a difference in the readings. Urine sugar is not used for your estimation of diabetes in today's world like I told you. Now across the various remaining presentations, I will be speaking slightly more about diabetes which will help you to fight diabetes and help in preventing diabetes. Thank you. I will be now speaking about pre-diabetes, a condition where you are not normal and you are not diabetic. It is a grey zone in between the two. This is as bad as probably becoming diabetic because this is very important because this is one area where you can probably do aggressive lifestyle management thereby preventing the onset of diabetes. You can even delay the onset of diabetes if you are to lead a healthy lifestyle. I would like to stress again that diabetes is a silent killer. Like in my previous presentation, I had spoken about the various complications of diabetes. One would not like to get the complication and then start aggressive therapy. It's always better to avoid getting a heart problem. And what use is there in living if you are not able to use your eyes or your hands or your feet to the best of its ability. So pre-diabetes is a condition where you are not yet diabetic but neither are you normal. Now the time when one is diagnosed as having diabetes, the patients go through a cycle of emotions which even include denial frustration, anger and even depression. It's like being told that one has got cancer. People have to make major and drastic modifications to their lifestyle which includes not only for them but also for the other family members. Now how do you diagnose pre-diabetes? Pre-diabetes is not as aggressive as diabetes but there are some tests which can be done and the levels of which would determine whether you fall within this gray zone. The American Diabetes Association in 2012 had laid down these levels which are important in the diagnosis of pre-diabetes. A fasting blood sugar of between 100 to 125 or milligram per deciliter, sorry, or between the levels of 5.6 to 6.9 millimoles qualifies as being called a pre-diabetic state. Or a post-meal two-hour blood check which has a level between 140 and 199 milligrams per deciliter or 
between 7.8 to 11 millimoles per liter also would qualify being labeled as a pre-diabetic. The three month average of sugar called the glycated hemoglobin levels between 5.7 to 6.4 will also qualify for the diagnosis of pre-diabetes. The management will include lifestyle management which will include changes in the diet as well as in your exercise and level of physical activity. It will also be equally important to stress the need for cessation of alcohol and smoking in this management. If there are risk factors such as obesity, a waist size of more than 40 inches for men or 38 inches for women, these levels would change from across the different races around the world. A history of smoking and a history of high blood pressure also will make one at risk for developing pre-diabetes. Besides lifestyle changes, which will include the dietary modification and exercise, which I will be detailing in one of the subsequent presentations, it is equally important that some people may need medicines to help in the control of pre-diabetes. Metformin, which has been in the market for almost close to seven decades, has been time-tested in the management of pre-diabetes in general. There have also been other reports where Acarbose and alpha glucosidase inhibitor has also helped in the management of pre-diabetes. Correct management will always help in progression to the development of frank diabetes mellitus. It is very important in today's world to be able to lead a healthy lifestyle by incorporating at least 30 minutes of physical activity, doing something which one is comfortable in doing, irrespective of the tight work schedule that most of the people do have. It's equally important to manage the stress levels in today's world as well. Always try to spend more time with your healthcare professional, trying to figure out how best to modify one's lifestyle given the very tight and busy schedule that one is faced with in today's world. It is always better to live well, though you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, rather than allowing diabetes to rule your life. It is always important to have a regular checkup to make sure your body remains healthy as shown by this very extremely good looking car. It's very important to maintain your body, all organs in your body to the best so that you get the best out of your body. So let us, let me hope that all of you will take a good step forward and try to prevent the onset of getting diabetes and if you are at risk for developing diabetes to prevent it from progressing to diabetes.